<laughs> Wait. Which Simpsons episode? It's like the two aliens are like running for president and they're like at the debate. Are you sure it's not Futurama? No, that was, yeah, that was Simpsons. Which season? Early on? I don't know. Here, I'll show the, I'll pull it up. In the last, uh, in the 2016 election, you remember when people were saying when, uh, well, I guess they probably say it a lot, like every time, but they were saying, um, if you don't vote for Hillary, it's a vote for Trump, and then the Trump people were like, if you don't vote for Trump, it's a vote for Hillary. That was like their logic to try to browbeat some people. I saw a tweet that says, uh, of, if you don't vote, a vote for Col Colin Powell is not a vote, is a vote against Faith Spotted Eagle. I fucked it up, but it was really funny because apparently there was some like person named Faith Spotted Eagle on the ballot in oh. 2016, which I can't believe I missed. Oh, was it just a picture? What are yeah. you but what are you going to do about it? It's a two-party system. <laughs> you have to vote for one of them. <laughs> oh, when the aliens take over Earth yeah. and then install themselves as the candidates. Yeah, I remember that kind of. <laughs> it's a two-party system. You have to vote for one of them. <laughs> yeah. I just like, and then Biden is like a... Literally losing consciousness. <laughs> Well, he was a corpse when he ran. Here's why he had to run, is because his he's been so corrupt for so long that if they left power without knowing for a fact that the next person to take it would be their Favorable buddy. To them, yeah, yeah they, which it's already falling apart just because maybe it was inevitable. Like, he's president, and the laptop thing keeps bubbling up, and even people that, like... Our Democrats are like talking about it. Well, that was the thing is uh, that and the lab leak theory were my two biggest things. Where I was like, dang, I guess I should never trust anything the media says ever again. Where they just straight up were like, oh, if you believe either of those things, like you're a conspiracy theorist, and now both of those are just like, like uncontestably true. And then I think for myself, I don't care what anyone calls me. <laughs> But I, I mean, they can call me whatever. It's probably not going to be true. I mean, they could say unkind things that might be true. But thinking for yourself is better than getting all your opinions prepackaged. And most people, it's just like the impression of the thing anyway. Like our news is so impressionistic. The headlines have to tell people how to feel. And like, I don't know. Just, even just the way they write articles, it's so like... Every closing paragraph or sentence is like Explains literally a maraschino cherry. I'm like, dude, y'all, y'all like just graduated like Comp 101, and you're still like packaging. Because I guess that's how people with like a lot of gumption but not that much talent like narrativize, just like by the book, just like this first sentence in the introduction has to do this, and then this next sentence is going to link into the second paragraph. And the third sentence is going to link to the third paragraph. And it's like, in this essay, I'm going to tell you this. Well, but it's like, the main thing is that journalism, or generally academia now, period, like, the 1960s saw the rise of, like, the new left, and the idea that, like, because there is no truth, there's only activism, and therefore, like, the goal of the academy is to, like, be an activist. And so you get all these people into higher education who specifically will not hire you unless you like agree with their presuppositions. And so once you have that for decades, then you're gonna have all these journalist students who are like, oh yeah, like what's important is that people understand what I think. Like that's not that they get information. And like most of those people you couldn't be less interested in what they think. Like there's there's probably and I certainly couldn't name them. I mean, maybe I'd recognize their names, but there's maybe 10, like, journalists in the real definition of that word around now. Nationally, certainly. Because it's sure. all just, like, pundits now, and even the people that are with, have the title journalists are right. punditri punditrizing. Punditrizing. That should be a crime. 
a pun to try. Yeah. Any any punditry in this town. We execute pundits here. You fucking coming here talking about whatever pundits talk about. They just give their spin on it. Are we punditizing right now? Are we in danger? No, we're in my <laughs> in my theoretical <laughs> utopia. No, we're not speaking in public terms. Well, everyone's a hypocrite, so once you get that, you get a lot more compassion with yourself and other people. Half the time, people just say they believe shit because it sounds good. Like, so few people actually, like, abide by the shit they... Especially the people that are like, oh, there's no truth. Oh, yeah, like, no, no one, one fucking no one, believes no that. that yeah. No one believes that. It's literally, like, some power move mm -hmm. because that's what they have as the highest thing because they took the words of sex deviants well i guess sartre and his gal had the beauvoir when they weren't they a couple Someone, i don't think they were but they might have been dirtbags still but there is some famous like philosophical couple where it, it seemed like maybe they lived pretty well yeah. which is a good check against someone's philosophy it's whether they live well whether they abide by it like you need, you can either reference check the legitimacy of the philosophy if someone's like living really well, or it's also respectable. What is it, Diogenes?